In this video, I'm going to talk through the drawing supplies that I think are most beneficial to beginner artists who are learning to draw. These tools are aimed at skill development. But I want you to remember, the supplies you have are not going to make you a better artist. Practicing is. I'm going to show you the tools that I have picked to help simplify my learning journey. Because having too many art supplies can actually be a distraction from learning. So these supplies have really been narrowed down to help me focus on my development of the understanding of the fundamentals of drawing. So let's get into it. Number one, your drawing surface. You'll need something to draw on. And as a beginner, I think you need three types. Practice paper, a practice sketchbook, and an art book sketchbook. For practice paper, I use newsprint pads. This is cheap and thin paper that I have in size A4 and A3. Having cheap, affordable practice paper to begin with can really help break down that barrier of getting started and remove that worry about ruining the paper because it's, it's cheap and easy available paper. I never feel like I'm wasting paper when I'm using newsprint. You can also tear it out easily and put it on a drawing board or an easel. Newsprint is also particularly useful for doing figure drawing and anatomy studies, or even just loose gestural sketches. So it's really good for focusing on those fundamentals of art, particularly around the human figure. It is a zero pressure medium and at the end of it, you can just end up with a stack of these loose sheets of paper with lots of sketchy drawings on and you can just recycle them because it's, it's just throwaway paper but it's so good to break down that barrier of just getting started and getting practicing. The next drawing surface is a practice sketchbook which ideally is going to be a sort of medium weight paper. I personally like a paper weight between 100 and 150 GSM for this and this is because it will handle layering and shading a bit better than thinner papers. Also if you want you can try a little bit of wet medium in it. Ideally you want to choose acid free paper as well so that it doesn't yellow or degrade over time. I really like mixed media paper because it does mean you can ex experiment with mixed medias in it. As for size, don't go too small to begin with. Ideally, if it's a sketchbook you're going to be taking out and about, try and get an A4 size and then if you're going to be using it at home in the studio, I mean I say at home in the studio, I'm, I'm sat in a garage, but that is my studio. Um, ideally you want to be using a bigger size, an A3. And this doesn't have to be a very expensive sketchbook. Ideally, you want it to feel usable so you can practice in it, explore in it, have fun, use different techniques, practice your composition, your shading, your line work, whatever. You want to get those creative juices flowing in it. This sketchbook should really be your no pressure learning environment. And actually sketchbooks are really nice and convenient because they are portable, they are generally quite cheap, easily available and they're a really nice record of your progress over time so you can look back and see how far you've come. The third drawing surface I think you should have is an art book sketchbook. Now if you've seen one of my previous videos that I'll link below I talk about the difference between sketchbooks and art books but basically art books are a sketchbook reserved for your more finished and refined pieces. So in your practice sketchbook you may start out with thumbnail sketches, uh, different compositions, testing out different colours and then in your art book sketchbook you can move on and do your more finalised finished piece. You can choose a higher quality paper for this sketchbook but it's not essential and honestly it seems like a lot of people like the idea of having a finished more refined art book of their progress. Now for my art books, I personally buy larger sheets of paper and cut them down and make my own sketchbooks out of them. I do have a tutorial video that I've done on how to do this. I'll link that in the description below as well. Number two is your drawing surface and you want this to be a tilted surface. Easiest way to achieve a tilted surface is either by using a desktop drawing board, a lap based drawing board or an easel, or you could even use a drafting table, but they are big and expensive and it's not really suitable for a beginner unless you already have one. Now it can feel a bit alien drawing on a tilted surface, and that's because we're used to writing on a flat surface, but it is recommended to draw on a tilted surface. 
And that's because it's much easier to record what we're seeing more accurately of our subject if the angle of our paper is more similar to the angle of our subject. So for example, if you're drawing from life, it's gonna be vertical 90 degree angle. Or if you're drawing a reference from your computer screen, again, that's gonna be 90 degree angle. So we want to bring our paper, our drawing surface, bit closer to what that angle is actually going to be. If you do decide to draw flat, you risk your image becoming distorted because that image is going to be elongated as you're looking down flat across the page rather than it being at a more vertical angle. Also, in the long run, it's really going to help your posture. I don't know about you, but I can get some serious neck strain when I'm like hung over looking at a page or even while I'm writing. I have a really simple desktop a3 drawing board that can be adjusted to a range of angles. A lap drawing board is also a really convenient option. I like to draw in bed and on the sofa as I have a toddler, so while he is napping or sleeping, I utilise that time to get my practice drawing in. It's really easy to use, I just rest it on my knees and it's naturally at a tilted angle if I'm sat with my feet up. The last one I'd recommend is an easel and it's, it's the classic really, isn't it? It's for all the artists back in the day used to use and what they're using now. It is really easily adjustable to the angle that you want. And another big benefit is it can hold much bigger sheets of paper if you want it to. I know I've used really long canvases on even just my small easel. Number three is for making permanent marks, fine liners or pens. Now, all you need to begin with is two. A fine liner, I prefer a 0.3 or a 0.5 and a brush pen. I really like drawing with fine liners because you can't erase them, so it really makes you mindful of the lines that you are placing down on the page. It makes you be thoughtful and really commit to that line. And I think it stops you just chucking down scribbles all over the place, which is easier to do with something like a pencil. And with a brush pen, you can get more line variation, and also it's a bit easier to shade in darker, bigger patches with a brush pen. Number four is a grey tone marker set. I have a set of grayscale markers specifically for doing tonal studies, also known as notans. It's basically doing a preliminary... It's basically doing a preliminary sketch in monochrome of either a reference that you're doing or a piece of artwork that you've composed. Doing this sketch in shades of grey is going to help you think about value rather than colour. And you can actually do this before moving on to a coloured drawing. I am using these studies as a stepping stone to improve my coloured drawings because mine can be quite flat where I haven't added enough darker values to my piece. And I think this is quite a universal issue that a lot of beginners have. So maybe consider whether tonal studies are something that could help improve your artwork. I initially bought six cheap water-based markers and they were just rubbish. So they have been donated to my son's art supplies and I've actually dished out on a set of six Copic markers in grayscale to help me focus on doing these tonal studies. Now, Copics aren't cheap. The only reason I've actually dished out for them is because it's my birthday this month and I'm treating myself and I haven't bought art supplies since Christmas. So I thought it's, I thought, I thought it's allowed. Another really good option that's a little bit cheaper is the Winsor and Newton Pro markers that do come in a similar grey scale set already made. Number five is your erasable drawing medium. And my preference is charcoal, but I'll also talk a little bit about graphite. So the first tool that I think is brilliant for beginner artists is willow charcoal. Now, willow charcoal is made from carbonized willow branches, so it gives a really lovely dark color. Willow charcoal is amazing for drawing figure drawing and loose sketches in general. It really encourages big, loose marks from your elbow and your shoulder in a way that pencils don't. You can't get too detailed with willow charcoal, which I think is really good for beginners because 
as a beginner, it's really easy to get bogged down by focusing on the detail rather than looking at the overall pictures, the overall shapes, the overall marks, which I think willow charcoal is really helpful at letting you do. It's also really easy to erase and smudge and blend and you can get really dark blacks with charcoal which you just can't get with something like graphite they're also really cheap and generally come in sort of packs of 12 upwards one possible downside is that they can be quite messy so i would have a towel down and then a tea towel for your hands i actually don't mind the mess um but i'm quite a tactile person especially when it comes to art materials I mean, look, you should see me when I go to playgroup with my son. Um, I'm like the mum that's like sat on one of the tiny child's chairs up with all the with all the PVA glue and the really cheap marker pens and the poster paint and just causing chaos. But yeah, I love it. So I really love that tactile-ness of, of willow charcoal and charcoal and pastels actually in general. So... I think they, they really bring me a lot of joy. And moving on from willow charcoal, something I use in conjunction with that is a form of compressed charcoal. There are lots of different brands of this, but I use one called Nitram. And this type of charcoal is harder than willow charcoal, so you can use it on top for more detailed work. It also comes in different shades for, from light, medium to dark. It's also water soluble, so you can actually use it with water to create washes. Used in conjunction with willow charcoal, it can give you a really good range of textures, darkness and detailing. However, it is harder to erase than willow charcoal. The last medium in erasable drawing materials is pencils. Now, my preference is for carbon pencils, which are very similar to charcoal pencils. But with either carbon, charcoal or graphite pencils, you want to be able to get a range of value with those pencils. And pencils come in the HB scale, with H meaning hardness and B meaning blackness. So the H pencils are harder, a bit more smudge resistant, and give a bit more precise lines, whereas the B pencils are a lot softer, and you're able to get much darker colours with them. And you only really need three pencils to begin with. I'm using Wolf's Carbon Pencils in a B, a 2B and a 6B. I like these pencils because they are stronger and less dusty than a charcoal pencil and they're really lovely and smooth to apply. They also come in a deeper black than graphite pencils. So why do I prefer charcoal or carbon pencils over graphite pencils? Well, I prefer the deeper tonal range, the darker, blacker colours that you can get with charcoal and carbon pencils over graphite pencils where it's that silvery grey and I'm really not keen on the shine of graphite pencils either whereas the carbon pencils are a really nice matte finish as well as charcoal. If you compare the carbon B, 2B and 6B to a graphite equivalent of those you can see a really big difference in the darkness that you can get with the carbon pencils. I just prefer the look and the softness of charcoal or carbon pencils in general. Don't get me wrong I have two or three sets of graphite pencils but I just don't find myself drawn to using them. But if you are a fan of graphite and you're going to start out using them again you only need three pencils. I would begin with a 2H a 2B and a 6B. And for both the carbon and the graphite pencils, the lightest shade, so either the 2B or the B, is going to be for putting down your lightest marks, your preliminary sketches. You then move on to using your 2B to fill out your sketch and your lines and start with some shading. And then that lovely soft 6B is going to be used for really focusing on filling out your sketch with the shading. Number six is actually a mechanical graphite pencil. I do have a mechanical graphite pencil for ease of use, especially when out and about. It keeps a point really easily and doesn't require sharpening. And it has a rubber on the end, so it's just really convenient. Number seven is coloured pencils. If you want to dip your toes into colour while learning to draw, I'd recommend a set of coloured pencils. Because I'm drawing with carbon pencils or charcoal instead of graphite, my preference is to use coloured pastel pencils over these. Pastel pencils are vibrant, soft and creamy to work with. I only have a limited range of colours at the moment, but I will be expanding on that in the future. You can also use traditional wax-based coloured pencils if you have chosen to use graphite. 
I don't really have any to show you because I don't use them. Although I do have probably some 15 year old Crayola colour pencils up in my son's drawing kit from my school days. I do however have a set of watercolour pencils that I will be diving into more in the future when I am starting to play around with colour more in my drawings. The last coloured pencil that is really handy is having either a white pastel or white charcoal pencil to add highlights to your drawing. Number eight is rubbers or erasers if you're across the pond. I would get yourself a kneaded putty eraser. You can mould it into whatever shape and size you want and it can also be used as a drawing tool with charcoal by picking up bits of charcoal to make highlights. It doesn't leave rubbings on the page and it won't damage your paper. I do think kneaded erasers work a lot better with charcoal than graphite but you can use them with graphite. Now if you are going to be using graphite I would focus more on a gum eraser but not a coloured gum eraser like the pink or the, or the blue ones. I don't even know why they make them. I do usually always have a gum eraser on me, usually for erasing big areas. The final really handy rubber to have is a stick rubber or eraser. I use the Mono Zero eraser. This little eraser is really lovely for adding highlights to drawings, particularly if you're using charcoal. Number nine is sharpness. A sandpaper pad, or even just plain sandpaper, as long as it's not coloured, is brilliant. It can be used to sharpen and shape Willow charcoal, nitrum charcoal, compressed charcoal. It can also be used to get your pencils to a really nice point. I also really love using it for cleaning my rubbers, uh, particularly the gum erasers. You can also use it for cleaning blending stumps. If you're using graphite pencils, just a standard pencil sharpener is gonna see you through. But if you're using charcoal pencils, carbon pencils, or pastel pencils, a blade is essential for sharpening them because it's gonna give you that longer lead which you can use on its side to draw. I just use a craft scalpel type blade to sharpen mine. Number 10 is blending stumps. Blending stumps are great for blending out either charcoal or graphite. Just remember to blend in circular motions to avoid those sharp edges. Like I mentioned, you can clean them easily on sandpaper or if they're really covered in charcoal, you can actually use them as a drawing the pencil themselves. Another option for blending is just using some cotton wool, which can give you a really soft blend. One thing I will say, if you're using blending stumps, is to be careful not to over blend with them instead of applying enough charcoal or graphite to the paper. Number 11 is fixative. Now you won't need fixative if you're using graphite pencils, but if you're using carbon charcoal or pastel, you will. Now fixative is, is expensive. The one I have is the Winsor and Newton one. And obviously if you're doing a big finished piece on some brilliant paper, then yeah, I understand using the expensive fixative, but if I'm just sketching in my sketchbook, then I'm gonna be using the one pound 50 hairspray from the supermarket and don't use the posh hairspray like I'm talking like the seven quid stuff that's got moisturizer and stuff in because your artwork doesn't need that so actually the cheaper the hairspray the better and in my opinion it works just as well uh, it's just in my sketchbook it's just for me and it's going to keep going to keep the charcoal or the pastel attached to the page and not smudged everywhere so it it does the job in my eyes and it's cheap and affordable. Uh, you can also use glassine paper if you have it uh, between but to be honest cheap hairspray does the job. Just go for it. I'm sure some people are probably going to crucify me for that. But, but yeah. Number 12 is a ruler. A stainless steel ruler is my go-to ruler. It is flexible yet sturdy, it's easy to clean and it's going to last you a very long time. If you need a straight crisp line, rulers are always going to have your back. And when you're learning perspective, they can be a really invaluable tool. Number 13 is clips. Now you can also use masking tape or washi tape instead of clips to attach loose sheets of paper to your drawing board or your easel. But I find clips are just easier and more convenient and actually hold better to the surface, especially if you're, if you're not taping down all four sides. And last but not least, number 14 
is your storage. Probably one of the most important tools is how you store your materials. So you're gonna want something to store them in for when you're in your studio or garage if you're me, and when you're on the go, which probably is gonna be a pencil case. You want your storage to be easy access and accessible to encourage you to make that artwork. If you've got it at hand, you're more likely to pick it up. And for now, I want you to fill your storage case, whatever you're using, with just your beginner art supplies. Don't have it cluttered and overcrowded with too many options, just keep them limited to what we've talked about. Now, these are supplies that I've collected probably over about five years, so don't go rushing out to buy art supplies. Look at what you have first. Is there anything that you could use from that already? And try not to spend too much time over buying art supplies, because that can actually be a distraction method from making the actual art. I'm actually going to make a video about this discussing sort of art hauls and actually how having a period of no buy for art supplies can help you use up what you already have. I quickly want to answer the question, what quality supplies should you buy? And I'll start out by saying that I think you should buy the best you can afford and ideally art is great quality. It's not completely necessary, but I like to know that if my supplies are good and my drawing or painting are is bad, then it's it's more operator error than the supplies that are holding me back. So I can really focus on improving my skills, knowing that it's not the supplies tripping me up along the way, I just need to improve. 